Uh, my name is Joe Grand. I'm a uh, product designer, electrical engineer, hardware hacker, uh, sort of specializing in designing consumer electronics, but also teaching people how to break electronic devices. So the Jetagulator is a tool that you can either use sort of offensively to look for weaknesses in devices or look for available debug interfaces that could be used, um, or you can use it kind of defensively or proactively to look at your own devices and make sure that you've disabled the debug interfaces that would prevent attackers or hackers from getting to. So the tool itself is uh, powered by a mini USB port, and when you plug it into your computer, it has a USB to uh, serial adapter on it, so it just shows up as a virtual COM port on your computer, and you get a menu with a bunch of commands, so it's really easy to set up. Um, the two main protocols that it can discover right now are JTAG, which is an industry standard, you know, low-level um, debug interface, where the vendors kind of build their programming and debugging support on top of that. So as long as we can find the pins, then we can use other tools to, to use it. Um, so JTAG is one, and then UART is another, which technically isn't a debug interface, but it's commonly used for debug output, um, uh, boot log information, console access, administrator access, and sometimes on a lot of devices, uh, the UART, if you're watching it as the system boots, you, get, you just get dropped into a root shell. A lot of security problems kind of cross the, the boundaries of what products are out there. Um, and by that I mean there's a lot of similarities of different classes of problems across all devices. Uh, and it's sort of also what I call low-hanging fruit. So we see a lot of exposed UART interfaces, a lot of exposed JTAG interfaces, and other debug interfaces, um, a lot of test points on circuit boards, and a lot of part markings on circuit boards, and things that make it easy for legitimate design engineers and for manufacturing, uh, but then also easy for attackers. So it's sort of one of these trade-offs of you know, security versus convenience. And when you're manufacturing, especially when you're manufacturing in high volume, any time you can save during that process equals money. And you know, of course, as engineers, we want to save money. So the convenience outweighs the security. You're never going to be 100% secure, right? But having something that at least makes it harder, because right now, for most products, it's not hard to find the right tools, find the right ways in. The motivation to hack systems kind of varies depending. Like, I grew up as a hacker um, since 1982, discovering bulletin board systems and how to make free phone calls and building electronic projects and modifying those. So I've always just been really curious about how things work uh, from an electronics perspective and then kind of making mischievous gadgets and, and, and breaking systems and, and repurposing things. Uh, so there is a lot of curiosity in the hacker world. I guess it's my 17th year at DEF CON, which is crazy, I know. Um, my first one was DEF CON 9, and then I came back at, I think it was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way up. Um, my connection is just through the hacker community. I grew up in Boston on the East Coast, so we had some of our own smaller hacker conferences um, back in the early 90s. So I didn't go to the early DEF CONs because that required a flight across the country and money. Um, but it wasn't until the community got a little bigger and a lot more of us started communicating outside of our regions where it made sense to come. Uh, and you know, a lot of my friends have, have been hackers for a long time and uh, it's just something that is just always on the calendar. Um, at one point, DEF CON 14, I designed the first electronic badge. Uh, which has turned into a big badge life phenomenon, and it just started as kind of uh, Dark Tangent, who started DEF CON. We were sitting around, and I had designed a, a, another little artistic circuit board for a hardware hacking class that I was teaching then and still teach now, and he said, hey, we should do something like that for DEF CON. And that, you know, we didn't know what people were going to expect. The conference was much smaller. I think we had four or 5,000, maybe 6,000 people, um, which was big for us at the time, but compared to now, it wasn't. And we said, let's just make this electronic badge and see if people like it, you know, instead of using a paper badge or a piece of plastic or whatever. DEF CON had always been known for having unique badges, but not ever electronic before. Um, so that has sort of become, that was my role for a number of years, 14 through 18, designing various electronic badges and, of course, giving a talk about how people can use it and hack it and learn from it, because um, that's part of the fun. And uh, I retired after that sort of, feeling like my work had been done. You know, like at that point, a lot of uh, people were building their own badges, which was great. It kind of sparked this whole thing. Uh, and, but I felt personally that I was sort of repeating myself. And I was like, all right, let's do something else. So I started designing other tools and hacking on other things and uh, somehow got roped into it this year. Now there's 28,000 people and uh, a lot more variety of, of different types of people with different interests, um, not even hackers, like people have come from the finance world and from other worlds that I've talked to today, um, 
that are just curious about it. You know, they hear about it and they want to see what are hackers doing, how can I learn from that? Um, because it's not just technology, you know, there's lock picking, there's biohacking, there's all these other things that it's just all about questioning things differently and kind of learning new, new tricks. Um, so it's been, you know, quite an adventure and it's going to be interesting to see how, how DEF CON continues to grow and morph over, I don't know, the next 27 years when we're really old, I don't know. So the Dark Tangent called me at the end of December, um, just totally out of the blue and um, said, hey, would you, know, you want to design the badge again? And I always had said, within these nine years of not doing it, if the Dark Tangent called me, then yeah, I'd do the badge again. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't feel like I needed to participate and other people were designing badges and it was going great. But for whatever reason, he asked me um, and it was just the right timing. It made sense. So over the past few years, DEF CON has had a theme and they've sort of been dark and kind of, you know, big brother watching, ominous sort of figures and imagery. And this year he sent me a picture of a woman I think it was from the 70s, an uh, Apple computer or some old computer company, woman holding a computer with clouds and pastel colors and just very happy and you know, I think she's floating on a lotus flower or something. Like it just felt very new age and happy and good. And we need that, you know, and like especially within our world, but even within the hacker community, you know, we wear a lot of black shirts and dark and I just wanted something something better and like that it just struck a nerve with me, you know, I just really felt like it would be awesome to have bright colors and right away what really, what came into my head was, was gems, like having some gemstone uh, and it just seemed to fit like this, you know, friendly time when technology uh, is useful and not overbearing. The theme's name is Technology's Promise and it really is about technology helping you and building community and not about tracking you and selling your soul, right? Selling all your data. So it just had such a good feeling around it that I wanted to do it. Should I keep going? <laughs> okay.